All right, Kate, how you doing? Good to catch up with you again. <laughs> yeah, uh, how you doing, Joe? Yeah, not bad. Uh, since the last time we spoke, a lot's, uh, a lot's changed. Like, obviously, I wasn't able to um, finish my triathlon season with an Ironman, but did a, a High Rocks event, which is a bit different than what, what I normally do. And I just wanted to chat to you about, like, what you think of, like, the training for, like, is high, can High Rocks training be beneficial for triathlon? And um, do you think that... Like, you could do both at a good level like what what do you reckon yeah i i've been thinking about this quite a lot actually since you did it and i think it really depends on the level of the triathlete as well so like initially for you joe i would say no i don't think that your high rocks training would help your triathlon training because high rock stuff is pure fitness based right meaning it's more like aerobic kind of stuff it's uh, and when you do that you work on like your anaerobic threshold your aerobic threshold like it's pure fitness but you get that with swim bike run like you don't need anything else on top of that um and the stimulus for the actual strength stuff that's in there isn't what you need to improve your endurance performance. You're, you're breaking my heart though. Stimulus. I felt like I was like I so know, anaerobic on it. Like, and I want to uh, do the old high rocks training as part of it. Yeah, like uh, I thought this was going to be music to my ears. I thought you were going to say, yeah, keep doing it, Joe. Like, it's brilliant. <laughs> but do you know what? I'm totally with you though, Joe. Like, when you sent me through some of the sessions and when you did it, Nick and I jumped online and we were watching all the videos and stuff of it. And I'm already looking like they just announced the Australian ones. I'm like, yeah, I'm doing it. So I don't, I don't think it's optimal to improve triathlon performance but I think you can balance it out um, I think that for non-professionals who still have so much room to improve their fitness I think it would be fine but also I think it will make them pretty sore and pretty tired as well and also like you got to enjoy it right like you said yeah. that you absolutely yeah. loved it what do you think like is there like with this the more traditional strength training that we were doing before, you know, like where you were getting me to do like sets of four or six reps of squats and like three to four sets, but like almost like max effort because we used to do like one to two reps in reserve, didn't we? And uh, obviously calf raises and, you know, all the normal traditional stuff that you would normally get in a training plan. Do you think like the kind of stuff that I was doing when I was doing that uh, uh, consistently for triathlon, would that help like you if you were to balance both doing like a high rocks event and a triathlon like do you think that kind of strength training would trend like be better for both like could actually help improve both you know like instead of like do the high the high rock stuff wouldn't necessarily help the triathlon but the norm more traditional strength stuff could help both if you know what i mean like do you think or or not yeah i reckon that's a much better balance like especially let's say for you joe because if you think about like why I gave you that heavy stuff and why you do it is so we improve your muscles like maximal voluntary contraction. So like the muscles capacity virtually, if you think about that. So the more maximal strength that you have, it means that say when you're putting out like a particular run pace, uh, particular power, like the more maximal strength you have, that becomes relatively lower. And that same concept is gonna transfer over to high rocks as well. So like, I did notice you sitting down in the wall balls, uh, but let's say in the back <laughs> end, right? You know what? When they you're put, doing your wall balls, they put that out put that because out. they were like, "Oh, do you want the box so you know how far to go down?" And I was like thinking, "No, I want the box so I can sit and get a recovery." Like I was so flipping gone by that point that I was like, "I don't. I know this is supposed to be out just so I know how far to go down, but I'm so because I just want it. I need the rest." They're like, "You're not supposed to sit on it. It's just a, you, you spring off it." And I said, "I can't." I said, "I'm too knackered. <laughs> I'm gone." Yeah, and I was like, "Looking." Oh yeah, other competitors on your video. None of them had it. <laughs> I know. I, I, when I was watching around at the start, I saw another guy had it, and me and my mate were talking. We we're like, "Oh, that's a good idea. Look at that." Because obviously, you think if it is there, you could like spring off it, couldn't you? You know, you literally go down and use it to like properly like push off against. And we're like, "Yeah, yeah, that'd be good." But I'd never done a wall ball until I'd done high rocks. Literally, my first ever wall ball was in the thing, and I picked up the. I accidentally picked up the six, and I got there. They went, "No, no, no, that's not yours. Yours is that one." I picked it up, and I thought, "Oh fuck!" Like I got to a hundred of these. I thought, "I'm going to be here for." A long yeah. time <laughs> oh, so you see if you had more like pure upper body strength so let's say you did more like uh well in in war balls case doing something like a push press would be perfect right but even a bench or you know some form of like maximal heavy upper body lift that would help your war balls and that would still help your triathlon performance too and I, the other one i noticed you got a bit stuck on was like your sled pulls as well so doing some heavy like bent over rows 
for example, would really help you with your triathlon performance and your high rocks performance because it would help your ability each time you pull to actually pull more. How would it help the swimming? Would it be more in like the pull phase of the swimming or like would it be you could just, the, the swim sessions just wouldn't take as much out of you? Like what way do you reckon it would yeah. help? Yeah, so... I know those numbers aren't accurate for you, but you know, for yeah. example's sake. Yeah. And then let's say that you improved your maximal voluntary contraction and the ability of your muscles to generate that maximal strength, then all of a sudden that 200 watts is not 75% of your max anymore. It will be lower than that because it's you're, you're stronger, right? Yeah. So that means that then yeah. let's say at that 200 watts, it's now only like 65%. So you can either increase your wattage to hold that relative 75%. Um, or sit there and then save energy for later on, which is how the whole concept around how your maximal strength training works. And it also helps like your muscles ability and your tendons ability to generate power as well. So like that's in particularly important in running. So when you hit the ground, push off again, you want your tendons and your muscles to be really stiff and strong. So that's gonna help your run performance in triathlon, but also in high rocks, obviously like in the back end when you're on like that number seven and eight K, you wanna be feeling like, okay, my muscles are absolutely F from all the other stuff that I've been doing. But so you wanna depend more on like your tendon stiffness and those kind of things to do the work when you're particularly fatigued. So you can definitely cross over some strength training there for sure. And I think in your case, that's your best bet. Like just yeah. rely on your triathlon training for your fitness. And then uh, until you retire at triathlon, then yeah. you can be like Kimberly, you know, he's like, great, now I'm prime, let's go for high rocks. Yeah. And then you guys can yeah, yeah totally. Off. So basically you're saying it will just improve your headroom. So it will raise the ceiling up. So you're not working at as high a percentage of your max. Yeah. So then basically the theory is you could do, you should be able to do that for longer because instead of working at 75%, you're working at 68, 70%. And then biomechanically you'll get more efficient as well because of the snap for your run. So you might use less oxygen for a given speed. So some huge like advantages basically, uh, especially for like long distance triathlon, isn't it? Cause then, you should be able to keep that pace going for ages. Um, one thing that I did, I would say is, I became so lax with the strength training during the summer because you know what it's like, you get to an event and then you ease off when you go there and then you get into bad habits, don't you? And you don't, you, once you kind of fall out of something, like you're not doing it consistently, you, you just end up not doing it. So I would say that uh, since, like going into that high rocks and like, obviously I did a gym session beforehand, like, it kind of, <laughs> yeah, I did one beforehand, um, but it kind of like brought back, like made me think, oh God, I really do need to do more of this. And then obviously doing the event, it kind of, you know, when you kind of like, people say they get the buzz back for it, don't they? You know, and like, you know, it was how much you needed to do it as well, because I felt like I fatigued so quickly on some of the exercises that like, obviously being a professional athlete in like triathlon, I felt like it was a bit shameful how much the muscles fatigued because they shouldn't really should yeah. they if you're a professional you know it's a bit like it's obviously showing that you've got some massive weaknesses in your mm -hmm. performance that could be you know what people say like low hanging fruit don't they you know it's like if i sorted that out it could be some massive gain so it's really made me realize how important it is to get back into the strength train this kind of like made me get motivated to get back in there you know so i've been finding myself going back in there now two three times a week and doing the stuff and instantly already I'm feeling like so much better, like my running, because I had quite a lot of illness recently, like obviously missed Florida because I felt like I had the, the stroke thing and I had to get some tests done. But then I got back into training, got food poisoned, was off for six days and thought, oh no, it's going to take me ages. But I really feel like, you know, after doing like two or three weeks of like strength training already, the gains seem like they're coming back so quick and like my running's got back to a decent level, my biking has. And I think I've actually neglected it for quite a while, which is terrible, really, when we've got the app, you know, and I've like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have no reason yeah. to. You got the app, I've got and no, you got me on yeah. speed dial. But, got... it, and it's interesting too when you say like 
how you've only been doing it for a couple more weeks and you feel pretty good again because people always think of strength training as you get these muscular adaptations so you think like oh i mean triathletes if you do a lot of endurance training you're not going to get super jacked but um you you get these muscular adaptations that occur but there's also neural adaptations so like your nervous system like it's better at firing it's better at firing all your muscle fibers together it's better at sending signals to your muscles saying hey work let's go let's improve like rate of force development so how quickly your muscles can contract and a lot of those improvements from the nervous system happen within seven to ten days after getting back into your strength training again so that's that like buzz where if you just do a few sessions you're like oh yeah i do feel good especially if you've done it before because you did it so consistently for so long um and so it wouldn't take you long to get back into it but your big thing too that you could do as well joe if you ever have a time like that again obviously you were sick so you couldn't go to the gym but maintaining your gym stuff once a week if you do it once a week over 12 weeks you can generally maintain yeah your strength gains. and i yeah. think that's one of the reasons why i hadn't been running as well this year off the bike because i was so consistent like through 2020 and 2022 mm -hmm. like leading in that that was when i was having all my best marathons and like wales i had my best run i was really on it with like the strength and condition i remember being at altitude in font Romeo. anywhere near as well off the bike despite running well over shorter just better at shorter distances you know like 10k and being in good run shape like that it hasn't transferred as well in an Ironman and that's probably one of the reasons probably just not being able to hold as good a technique and just getting there a bit more tired maybe that's on the bike it's like fatigued you more if you know what I mean like you know you're supporting muscles and everything like that that I just haven't been able to execute it yeah, and it's interesting too, you say that you really notice it in the longer stuff because so many people think strength training is for like 5K or 10K, you know, work on that explosiveness or just work on plyometrics. But you can improve that, but there's so much like huge performance that you can get in the long distance. Yeah, yeah. It's in that back yeah, yeah. end. In particular, like Wales is a prime example, like, you know, when you held on so well for that run, that's it's the back end that you really start to notice it. It's like from 35K onwards when everyone's struggling that you actually still have that bit of energy because you've conserved that because your muscles are, well, your whole body's more efficient. Yeah, so yeah. So it's, yeah, it's yeah. really where you notice. You'll notice it probably more in that than any 5 or 10K race that you do. And you, yeah, you probably would have done a bit better in High Rocks if <laughs> you stuck yeah. to it. No, totally. <laughs> I definitely would. <laughs> All right, I've what got a quickly. I've got. I've got a quickly go oh, in us. Uh, just to let, just to put Maisie out because she's hitting the door. She's gonna like wee on the floor otherwise. <laughs> Maisie, come on. I, was, I said I thought it was gonna be me with the boys. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was gonna ask you, Joe. What? And I think I know the answer to this. What's harder out of the toughest strength session that I've ever given you, or? Or, okay, prob not, let's not go with high rocks competition because it's obviously going to be that. But the half high rock session that you did the other day. Oh, um, if I was to push the half high rock session like flat out that because it's just grim, isn't it? Like every time you go on to, it's just different, isn't it? Like the strength training that you do, obviously like it's max effort. So like once you get to like reps three and four, you're like, you're hanging on a bit, but it's not as painful is like something that lasts like half an hour where especially when you're not that good at some of the exercises um but when I did it the half session the other day I did sandbag the recoveries a bit between the, the set the uh, runs and the exercises so it wasn't too bad whereas it was more about just seeing how good I was at the exercise and seeing if I'd got any better but if I did that flat out then that would have been pretty grim but it's just a 25 minute to 30 minute full-on effort isn't it but it was still tough anyway yeah. like I mean I found I find them burpee broad jumps like absolutely horrific. Like to be honest. Oh, I like them. There, I I actually don't mind them. I mean, I did sandbag mine a little bit too. I don't mind them, but I find <laughs> I was they. Like, oh, I've got to stay hydrated. They get my heart rate up so high though. Like I had a heart rate monitor on when I did it just to see what kind of heart rate I get to while I'm doing this kind of like some of the exercises, and I think when I did that and the lunges, my heart rate got up to 160, which doesn't sound that high to some people, but that's like me. That's like a 10k heart rate you know, while I'm doing it, which is pretty high for that kind of thing, isn't it? Like I finished it and like, yeah. I needed like 40 or 50 meters of each one. But by the time I got to the end, my heart, I could feel my heart rate was like absolutely pounding. Like, and I was pouring with sweat. I was like, bloody hell. Like I didn't realize how bad it was. Yeah. Cause when you're in the zone and you do it in the proper race, you've got all the tunes pumping everyone there. 
and yeah. uh, it, you kind of get through it a bit. But doing it in training, actually, you, it is, yeah, it's pretty grim. <laughs> it's, it's interesting to you say that on like, um, you know, by rep three or four, or whatever of the heavy stuff that I give you, you feel yuck, but it's over within, you know, three or four seconds, really. Because one of the most common things, and I know we chat about this a bit, is how much triathletes and I get this a lot from triathletes and runners of how they get really confused when I say a maximal strength training session is so much easier than high rep, low load yeah. stuff like yeah. repetitive burpee broad jumps or doing things like, um, yeah, any high rep movements really like high, low weight, high rep squats or deadies, whatever the movement is. But people think because it's muscular endurance training and it kind of replicates endurance stuff, they think that's the way to go. But really, it just makes you really sore. I'm really tired and fatigued. Yeah. And you don't get enough yeah. stimulus to improve strength. If, and it's way harder. With, with our app, how do you reckon that some people could get into strength and conditioning? Like, you know, if you're like a novice and you haven't had, like I say novice in terms of like your background in strength and conditioning, like I was when I saw you in 2018, I hadn't done any of it before. And so like maybe little bits in the gym when I've gone there, but it was like completely winging it. Like I wasn't really sure what I was supposed to be doing. I just seen the odd video on YouTube of someone doing some stuff for running. And then I met you and you got me into doing it properly. And that was when I really got some gains. So how do you think um, a novice strength, like someone with a novice background strength and training can use our app to really get the best out of themselves and like know what they're actually doing well i guess the good thing about the app is it pretty much does it for you so it makes it so much easier because i think like i don't know what videos you youtube show but there's so much um <laughs> misinformation out there right like a total minefield of conflicting information that's really confusing so i always start off like beginner start off on super basics and i think that one of the easiest things and this is what we use in the app is use that reps in reserve for your feedback so once you sort of feel confident with the exercise then using reps in reserve i think helps clarify a lot for the particular exercises because I think when people do an exercise they go well how many sets how many reps and like how hard is it meant to feel and then you know that reps and reserve is so just up to you it depends on your fatigue on the day etc yeah. so using yeah. that I think makes it so easy for beginners to get a gauge of how easy or hard an exercise is meant to feel yeah it's like let's yeah. say you know you do i'm just going to say a squat because it's such a good basic exercise but you go okay six squats and then you re-rack and you just go well, how many more could have i done uh maybe three or four and you look at what's prescribed then it's so easy it kind of takes that guessing game out so like start super simple so always start beginner or novice don't go straight in the deep end because otherwise i think that you just end up with weights but too heavy i just want to say as well while you're on that that advanced exercises are definitely advanced like they're pretty tough aren't they so like there's no there's no harm in starting off with beginner or intermediate because the advanced ones are very tough especially with your balance and stuff yeah. if you're not used to doing them you just end up doing them with terrible technique and you won't yeah. gain as much as what you could exactly. out of doing it um yeah exactly and there's nothing wrong with doing like really simple exercises and nailing them exactly like if you don't have exactly. the skill to do the hard ones you're not going to hit the right weight you could risk injuring yourself if you're going too crazy as well. Um, and you're just going to totally miss the point of it, right? Like yeah. there's nothing wrong with yeah. really good basic exercises. And like I didn't let you progress to like hang cleans until last year. <laughs> <laughs> you should have kept me at the beginner ones. If you'd have seen me at the high rocks, you'd have taken me off it. You'd have said it's not for you. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you took your shirt off at the end. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. One thing, that was me. one thing I will say as well for people that are watching this, like, um, a lot of these sessions that uh, Kate's put in there, because Kate was the brains behind the app, and she's like used a lot of the sessions that you've you've had the gym endurance movement in Perth for quite a few years, haven't you? Like maybe like probably eight, ten, eight years or more now. Yeah, and we ran it from uni Notre Dame first for I think it was three years, and then we're coming up to a six-year anniversary. Six years. She's got a PhD in strength training for triathletes. Really knows her stuff, and a lot of these sessions are all geared around the stuff what you would do in person but the whole idea of the app is basically it's we've tried to make it as close to getting personal training without getting personal training because obviously Kate's in Australia and Perth so if you're in England it's impossible that you can have someone there so basically the sessions are all what she believes in what she's done the research in and when you do the exercises the app 
gets to know from the feedback you put in what weights and what reps to prescribe mm -hmm. for your next set. And as you go, it will almost like keep track of the weights that you've done, how your progress is going. And it, when you start the session the next time, it uses the feedback you left after the previous time to carry on. So it's basically like personal training without having a personal trainer there. There's videos where you can see how to do the techniques and a bit of uh, info about what you should be doing when you do the exercises and also an e slightly easier option for an exercise and a more progressive one if you want to try a harder one. So basically I don't think there's anything out there for triathlon where you can get uh, an app that will coach you, show you how to do all the exercises and there's so many different sessions on there. I mean how many sessions is there roughly if you reckon on there? Like hundreds <laughs> you know, isn't I there? I looked at this today Joe, there's yeah. over 1500 different workouts. Wow. So I just did a whole new programs, so I just did like an eight week like pure performance block for like triathletes and runners so there's so many but yeah it totally removes the guessing game out of it because it, it will literally change your weights for you based on your feedback and for triathletes there's the fatigue scale so that's the other thing I think is especially when you're new to strength training and you're a triathlete or endurance athlete, you're a runner, whatever you are, you're like constantly fatigued, right? So being able to just put in on that scale how you're feeling and have it figure it out for you, I think is like the main thing because I would always have people come into the classes or come and see me and say, I want to do this, but I'm tired today or I did a big Greek session the day before or, or people would come in and say, I'm feeling really fresh. I want to go really hard on the weights yeah. today. And it's like, cool. Yeah. So like that scale is really good because it will tell you exactly what to do. And the other thing too, Joe, I was going to say is we have like so much info that we share on our social media, like on our um, Instagram account and like our Valera YouTube as well. So you, quite a few people kind of ask questions on social media and stuff. But if you scroll through there, there's heaps of free info on there too. Yeah. And like heaps of yeah. technique videos as well and ideas of, exercises and stuff too for especially for beginners yeah we can guarantee that if you use the app you will uh, get pbs next season you're 100 percent take your performances to the next level you get a two-week yeah. free trial on the app but if you if you use the code big dog 10 you'll get another two weeks so it'll be like a four-week trial it's only six pounds a month so basically two coffees is more expensive than the app so check it out give it a go and let us know what you what you thought of the app you can comment on our insta on the valir instagram and let us know how you're finding it but we reckon that you'll absolutely love it and it will take your performances to the next level so um yeah thanks for that kate great to catch up with you again and uh hopefully i'll do you more proud at the next uh high rocks with uh, consistent strength <laughs> we'll, and conditioning we'll do doubles joe we'll do doubles <laughs> you'll put me to shame i ain't doing doubles with you <laughs> <laughs> I'm picturing you dragging me on the run and then me dragging you on all the strength exercises. <laughs> all right. Oh, good to chat, Joe. Yeah, good chat. Awesome. 